Hi everyone, my name is Raziel Kane and I'm back with another RK's voice acting. Where do I start with this one? When doing my spotlight on people that were active before the internet, I usually have to go to great lengths in order to find anything and put something together. For this American DJ, I could do a miniseries. This icon is probably the most popular personality I've had the pleasure of researching. His fandom goes way beyond Transformers, to a point where the show we all love and cherish would potentially be a footnote in his biography. Without further delay, let me introduce you to the voice of everyone's childhood, Casey Kasem. Born Kemal Amin Kasem on April 27, 1932, in Detroit, Michigan, of Lebanese refugees Emil and Helen Kasem. His parents, grocers by trade, would encourage assimilation of the American life for their children. And it seems that's exactly what Kemal did. He would reportedly be inspired to follow a radio career during the 1940s by the make-believe ballroom radio show. He would experience radio hosting for the first time while covering sports for the Northwestern High School in his hometown of Detroit. Then he went to Wayne State University, where he lent his voice to pre-DJ era radio shows like The Lone Ranger and Challenge of the Yukon. Kamal was drafted in 1952 in the US Army for the Korean conflict and would work on the Armed Force Radio as a DJ and announcer. After the war, Kamal would work for WJLB and WJBK in Detroit, but would leave radio to help with the family grocery store in Fenton, Michigan. He tried to pursue a stage acting career unsuccessfully for six months, before returning to Detroit and reapplied at WJBK, who would instead choose to offer him an evening time slot on co-owned WJW station, but also a hosting role on WJW TV for Cleveland Bandstand. Cleveland was becoming an epicenter of popular music. It appealed to Kamal, having been a fan of Bill Randall's run as a pioneer disc jockey on Detroit's WERE. Kemal accepted and identified himself as Casey on the mic, owning to many misspelling of his name even on this station's promo. From this point on, I'll focus on his greatest achievements, highlights and strong points, because his list of accomplishments is just too much to put in a spotlight. As we all know, or heard, he's been the most iconic voice in radio for about four decades. Within three months in Cleveland, his show became number two on weeknights and number one on Saturday nights. Trying to distinguish himself from the mass by focusing on high-energy R&B for three hours and more chilled tunes for the last hour, he stood out from the pop-oriented shows. From there, he worked on various stations and was always able to shine each time. He tuned and improved his style for about a decade. He even started to host and act on TV and movies. In the 60s, you could have seen him co-hosting Shebang in 1964 or playing in a Y-E-5-0, Ironside, the Glory Stompers, or the Incredible Two-Headed Transplant. Of course, we can't talk about Casey without talking about Scooby-Doo. He gave life to Shaggy Rogers from 1969. And all because you had to stay and see Star, Dog Ranger of the North Woods, twice. To 2009. What are you, a big green dragon afraid of a little sword fight? He voiced him 37 times, if you include a cereal commercial. It's part of a complete breakfast. Like service here is kind of slow, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Shaggy is probably one of the most recognized characters on the planet, across all age groups. He's even spawning memes in the current age. Casey played a major role in the popularity of the character, and I find this to be a major accomplishment for him. Casey gained in popularity and status until 1970, where he would launch American Top 40, along with Don Bastani, Tom Rounds, and Ron Jacobs. That show is what he is truly remembered for across the world. That voice, which he qualified as being just the same as the guy next door, would be a staple of radio for years to come. While Top 40 radio was on the decline as most DJs went with album-oriented progressive rock music, Casey mixed mini bios and trivia in the presentation of the songs, added segment to read fan mail requesting dedications for loved ones, and using his signature phrase, Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. All contributed to ensure American Top 40 would explode in the most popular show nationwide. Many imitation followed and the radio show even spawned the half-hour TV spin-off America's Top 40, hosted by Casey himself. Parallel to his pillar of radio shows, Casey kept acting and started voicing Robin in 11 iterations of the Super Friends from 1973 to 1985 voiced Mary in The Return of the King and did a number of voices for Sesame Street. He was Alexander Cabot III in Josie and the Pussycat and the outer space version of the show, voiced Peter Cottontail in the TV movie Here Comes Peter Cottontail, 
and played Mark on Battle of the Planets. Casey played on The Night That Panicked America, a movie about that time when Orson Welles accidentally provoked a mass panic. Casey also guest starred in episodes of Hardy Boy's Nancy Drew Mysteries, Charlie's Angels, shared the spotlight in the movie The Dark, and made a cameo in Ghostbusters, playing himself as the host of American Top 40. Still making headlines all across the country, the Ghostbusters are at it again. From 1983 to 1987, he founded, hosted, and co-produced the American Video Awards, and participated in our favorite show, The Transformers. Joining a cast composed of now-considered legendary voice actors, Casey gave life to four fan-favorite characters for season one and two. He's the iconic voice of Teletran 1. Unexplained change in oil tanker shipping patterns. The Gunner Blue Street. And while they work, I'll take care of our three Raiders. The impulsive cliff jumper. Sorry guys, but it kind of looked like a Decepticon. And the very bad man, Dr. Archibald. I'll just have to create more slaves. Out of those, he would reprise the role of cliff jumper for the movie. Yes! We're not getting away! After this, he rarely did voice work other than Shaggy, but he did parody himself in Tiny Toon Adventures by voicing Flanky Fakem, and also in Hysteria by portraying Calgary Kaysen. He played in a couple shows, but the funniest thing is that he portrayed himself on ALF, Saved by the Bell, The Ben Stiller Show. Scoobo, buddy, old friend, old pal, I can really dig a pizza right now! <laughs> Now do you mind if we finish our meal? No, 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 do me a favor. And Sister Sister, to top it off in Homeboys in Outer Space as Spacey Kaysen. After a contract dispute with ABC Radio Network in 1988, he would leave American Top 40 to create Casey's Top 40, a five-year, $15 million contract with Westwood One. He hosted that show with the same success for 10 years, even doing two other spin-off shows, Casey's Top 20 and Casey's Countdown. In 1998, three years after American Top 40 was cancelled, Casey regained the rights to the title and relaunched the show on AMFM Network. Five years later, he announced that he was leaving American Top 40 but kept the American Top 20 show, who would later become American Top 10. And finally, in 2009, after the cancellation of his shows by Premier Radio after an 11-year partnership, Casey retired at age 77, deciding against finding another station and wanting to try writing his memoirs. Casey Kasem unfortunately passed on June 15, 2014 at the age of 82. He's an icon to be remembered and I have a newfound respect for the man. I had previously stated that I wouldn't cover him because of various reasons, but I decided to do so anyway and tried to give my positive review of the voice actor that gave me a great show I still love today. During my research, I realized that being one of the most recognized celebrities in the world would put him at the center of many controversies, which I chose to admit today. I never dwelled on actor's personal life and I wasn't going to start pointing out gossip, rumors and accusations today. Let's remember Casey Kasem for his contributions to radio, cartoons and various other venues. We must never forget that he was the youngest member ever to be inducted in the National Radio Hall of Fame, that he has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and received the first ever Lifetime Achievement Award from Billboard magazine in 1997. That's worth remembering. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Casey Kasem's career. If you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell. Also leave a comment, I really like reading you guys. Keep coming back, I have more on the way. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care!